So I thought we would um, watch a short clip of Art Spiegelman discussing how he came up with the, the allegory of uh, mice to depict uh, the Jewish community at the time who existed in Europe and Poland. Um, and he'll talk about how he discovered um, examples of Nazi propaganda, such as the poster at the top of the page, um, depicting uh, a Jewish person as a rat. Um, so he's taking this pre-existing racist uh, idea and then translating it into mouse for his own sort of uh, commentary on the racism that existed at the time and how racism still exists uh, today but in a different form. Um, so he is sort of commenting on the construction of uh, racism uh, in human sort of ideologies. So we'll talk a little bit about um, that in a moment, but first we'll listen to Art Spiegelman, a clip of Art Spiegelman speaking about uh, his use of mice. I had done Mouse originally as a three-page comic strip for an underground comic called Funny Aminals that was coming out in 1971. And like most underground comics, it was rather open-ended what one did as a contribution. Here the only requirement was to use anthropomorphic characters. At the time I was trying to figure this out, I went to sit in on some classes. A friend of mine, Ken Jacobs, a filmmaker and very wonderful teacher at SUNY Binghamton, was showing some old animated cartoons in his class with cats and mice romping around. And then he was showing some racist cartoons from the same period, and it became clear that there was a connection between the two, that Al Jolson was Mickey Mouse without the ears. At that point, I said, I have it. I'll do a comic book story about the Ku Klux cats and a lynching of some mice and deal with racism in America using cats and mice as the vehicle. And that lasted about 10 minutes before I realized I just didn't have enough background and knowledge to make this thing happen well. I'd just come across as well-intended liberal slob. And instantly thereafter, the synapses connected, and I realized that I had a metaphor of oppression much closer to my own past. The entire... Nazi project, the final solution, ended up dividing humanity into various species so that there were Ubermenschen, Untermenschen, and what was involved was the extermination of the Jews, and extermination is a word reserved for vermin. It's not what happens to people. What happens to people is they get murdered. I found that the gas that was used in Auschwitz was Zyklon B, a pesticide. I found that in a film called The Eternal Jew, a uh, racist documentary made by a guy named Hippler. There's shots of old Jewish men milling around in a ghetto, cut to a swarm of rats in a sewer, and saying that the Jews are the rats of mankind carrying their disease throughout the world. So as we just heard um, Art Spiegelman discuss, he was using or he, he developed this idea of the animal allegory based on the existing racism at the time of World War II and in particular the ideologies um, based on sort of this Nazi race theory that there were um, superior and inferior uh, races that existed. Um, and he uses two terms, Ubermensch and Untermensch. And I'll just read you definitions. So the Ubermensch uh, literally means overman, overhuman, or above human, superman or superhuman. And this was used, this term was used by Hitler and the Nazis to describe their idea of a biologically superior Aryan or Germanic master race. And it was again in opposition, Ubermensch was in opposition to uh, Untermensch. And this again was based solely on your you know, race or nationality, uh, any other sort of physical characteristics did not matter in this uh, understanding of superiority or inferiority. 
Um, so the Untermensch uh, was a term uh, used to describe anybody who was deemed inferior. So they, this is again literally translated to under men or inferior men. And it was used to describe anyone of Jewish descent. So if you were uh, identified as Jewish, you were considered an Untermensch. And as well as any other group of people who were undesirable or uh, deemed uh, less than human, subhuman. Uh, that included Polish people, Czechs, uh, Black Germans, Romanese, or anyone with a mental or physical disability. So if you were considered an Untermensch, you were treated as less than human. And in this photograph we have sort of, um, it sort of appears, this is, would sort of be at uh, a concentration camp and how the men were sort of stacked one on top of another. Um, almost in sort of like a cage-like environments, so treated uh, like animals, subhumans, um, and they were worked, exploited for their labor, labor, and then discarded when they were no longer of use to the Nazi party. And uh, Spiegelman sort of talks about how the whole process or whole project of the Nazi party was extermination of an entire race, and this is what, again what we call genocide. And there were sort of, sort of um, you know, he talks about the sort of uh, interesting comparisons that existed at the time that drew together uh, mice and how Jewish people were treated. And Zykon B was the gas used in the uh, concentration camps, the extermination camps, to kill, you know, mass mass murders um, in the gas chambers. And um, again, the treatment of uh, these individuals uh, in conditions that were less, you know, subhuman, very abject, uh, extreme deprivation, hunger, um, unsanitary conditions, so disease were uh, spreading as well, so uh, Vladek will eventually uh, contract typhus, and this will again be a life-threatening uh, illness that um, he has to struggle to overcome. So just the very sort of living conditions were um, not suitable for a human, you know, healthy human environment, right? So again, it reflects the ideology, uh, the racist ideology at the time. So one of the things we can talk about is how Art Spiegelman, and he's not just reproducing the racist ideology uh, as it existed, right? He's doing something different and really sort of starting to take apart the ideology and reveal how it was a construction, right? It's not based on reality. It's just a uh, racist perception that existed at the time. Um, so one of the ways that he undermines this allegory is through uh, his illustrations. So this is the opening scene of book two when he is deciding how he should draw his wife, Francoise. She's of French descent, but she has converted to Judaism. And he doesn't know if, she's, if he's going to draw her as a mouse, but we also get the sense that he has drawn her as a mouse because we can see her. Uh, depicted as such, but he at this moment in the book is sort of contemplating his animal allegory and how it's not as clear-cut as he originally intended it to be in book one. So he doesn't know whether to draw her as a French poodle or as a frog as he's drawn other French people, uh, a dog because she they're both living in America now. So the lines between different sort of um, ethnicities uh, nationalities is much more blurred in book two and we'll get Art Spiegelman developing and evolving uh, the allegory cat and mouse uh, as well as the other animals through book two and in this instance it sort of it shows how one's national or ethnicity or identity and how we choose to sort of depict ourselves or how we are perceived by others is not as easy as just saying oh this person's a cat or a mouse or this person's a dog or a frog. So uh, human identity is much more um, complicated 
and uh, right, we sort of, I can identify myself, for instance, as Romanian, as English, as Irish, as Canadian. So whatever your background is, it's, again, it's, it's much more complex than a single ethnic identity, right? So I think he's sort of commenting on how, uh, how our idea of ethnic identity, nationality, race has evolved and changed over time, right? This is him conversing with Francoise in the 1970s while he's writing Mouse. Um, so again, if you compare uh, the society's view of sort of race and ethnicity in 1970 versus the, 19, the late 1930s when World War II was taking place. Um, again, there's a con contrast in how uh, each society is um, viewing these separations. And uh, again, we've become much more, um, or a lot less sort of judgmental, discriminatory, prejudiced uh, than they were in 1940s. But at the same time, uh, it's still existent in North American society where we have examples of racism. So as a society, we haven't progressed to the point where uh, race and ethnicity doesn't matter. Um, but we've gotten to the point where uh, we no longer see everybody as sort of separate uh, the way that they did um, during World War II. So probably the most talked about um, part of book two is uh, chapter two. And in chapter two we have the level of metafiction um, that we talked about uh, a while ago. So in book to chapter two, we have Art Spiegelman um, addressing the reader in particular, and he's describing at this moment, um, this is sort of in the super present, so the most contemporary part of the narrative. This is after Vladik has died, and this occurs even after uh, the book ends, right? So. This is a moment when Art Spiegelman is struggling with his representation of book two. He's talking about um, sort of how he's experiencing writer's block at this moment and he's feeling depressed. He has difficulty sort of um, dealing with some of the critical and commercial success of book one. And at this time, again, he's struggling. But in this scene, we can also look at the illustrations and how his racial allegory has evolved. So he is drawing himself. Uh, this is 19... 1986. And he's drawn himself as a human wearing a mouse mask, right? So. It's different than how it appeared in book one, where he's drawing himself as a human character wearing a distinctly tied on mouse mask. He's not drawing himself as a mouse as he did in book one. Uh, so it's another sort of level of commentary where I think Art Spiegelman is sort of, again, making it clear that underneath all of these masks of identity that we wear, uh, or we choose to wear, uh, we're all humans underneath, right? So on some level, our identity, our ethnicity is just a something we choose to identify ourselves with, right? So whether you want to wear that mouse mask uh, as he does uh, is important while he's writing the book Mouse, but underneath uh, the masks of all the other characters, so if you turn the page to page 42, Every character is drawn as a human wearing a mask. So there be there'll be reporters asking him questions. Uh, the one is wearing a cat mask. One is wearing a dog mask. And so we have a sort of um, a clear indication that underneath of all these sort of masks or identities, we're all just human. So he's sort of saying something about how our society has evolved and changed in regards to how it. Um, how it perceives uh, ethnic or racial differences. As a rep representation of metafiction, here we have an example where 
the process of his writing of the novel is made clearly, uh, he's clearly showing us the process.